Hey guys, and welcome to our complete guide on how to farm and tame animals in Valheim. Today I'm going to be showing you how to tame boars, how to tame wolves, and how to tame locks, as well as how to plant all the different types of plants that you can grow in Valheim, where to find them, and what you can actually do with them, and why maybe you would want to do all these kinds of things. What can they help you with? What are they useful for? We're going to cover all of that in today's video. But let's go ahead and start out with the taming aspect. Alrighty, so let's start off this video by talking about how to tame animals in Valheim in the first place. This is not hard to do whatsoever. All you're going to need to do is either A, sneak up to the animal like I would be doing here, and then you're going to go ahead and throw down a mushroom without it detecting you somewhere nearby. Let's split this down to one real quick. We'll just chuck it down here on the ground. See if he'll go eat it. Yep, he's going to wander over. He's going to eat that mushroom. And you're going to get these little golden hearts appear over him. Those golden hearts are your indicator that it is being tamed. Now, do keep in mind, this is going to take a long period of time. Taming does not usually happen very fast in Valheim. So, if you don't want to sit here and babysit the boar and make sure it doesn't die or have it wander away and lose it, you're going to want to build a pen. So the best way you can do this, and the cheapest way you can do this for boars, is you're going to use round pole fences. Now do keep, that, now do keep in mind that we're going to be doing this for a lot of other tactics when it comes to taming, just with different materials. In the same sense, we're going to be building a different pen for later creatures like wolves and loxes, which we will cover here. And then I will show you how to do that. So let's see if we can get aggro on this boar. There you go, I made him angry. We're gonna run him over here into this little fence. Come here, nope, come back, come back. Come here, Mr. Boar. Don't be shy, come on in. So we've walled him in. We're gonna wall ourselves in so the boar can't get out. And then we're gonna jump over the fence. Now, if you stay close to him, he won't de-aggro, so you won't be able to feed him. So we're going to run away and make sure we're de-aggroed. And then we will go fly back real quick. Yep, here we go. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drop your mushrooms in. So if you wanted to drop a stack, you can do that. He will not eat the whole stack, just to show you real quick. Uh, he's not actually hungry right now, so I don't think he'll eat. But you can drop the whole stack in. Just keep in mind, if it is not inside the range of a workbench, you will not be able to do this because it's going to start to despawn. But any items on the ground that are within the range of a workbench will not despawn. So you can drop the whole stack in the pen and just leave it. Now, I have another pen set up over here already with two boars that have already been tamed. So let's go ahead and get ourselves those mushrooms back. Let's see, thank you. And we're gonna go ahead and feed these guys. So you can actually breed your animals too. That's the same tactic we're gonna use for taming on pretty much everything. We're gonna build a pen, we're gonna run the animal inside, and then we're gonna close it off behind us, drop down a workbench if we haven't already, and we should be good to go. That's your main tactic for taming animals. Whether that's a lox or that's a wolf, the same rule applies. You just have to have, obviously, stronger things to protect them and keep them inside. Like, the lox here needs stone walls, otherwise they'll just break it. And the wolves here need to at least have these wooden, like, palisade things. Otherwise, they're just going to break through these fences in, like, two hits. You can really only use these cheap fences when you're doing the boars. But anyways, so let's use the uh, breeding here and go over that. So breeding in Valheim is a little complicated, but not crazy. So let's go ahead and again, use these boars here as our example. We're gonna throw these mushrooms inside and they should wander over and eat them. Or these are tamed, right? Yeah, they are tamed. So they're gonna wander over and they're gonna go ahead and eat it. Now, when you have two of the same animal type near each other that eat a piece of food, you're going to get a baby animal. Usually it'll take a few seconds or a minute or two for them to actually pop it out. But if we wait long enough, they will actually spawn us a little baby boar, which will then grow up over a period of time. And we'll be able to breed into more and more and more boars. So this is a great method if you're trying to farm meat, you can use this. But there is a better way that we can get more meat per boar if we're willing to go the extra mile. 
And to do that, we're going to need star boars, or again, same with the locks and the wolves. These are all the only tameable animals within Valheim, by the way, at least currently. Oh, here we go, they just bred. Okay, so you can see they just bred with each other because they're full, they're not hungry, they wandered over each other, and now we just have to wait for them to actually pop out the baby. So if we come back here in a little bit, we should see a baby spawn out. And if you guys were wondering what the babies look like, that is a baby boar for you. They look so cute, they're, but they're going to grow up and turn into my meal, so don't get too attached. <laughs> so you may be wondering what happens when you have higher star boars that you want to breed, or any animal for that example. It could be a lox, it could be a wolf. Well, when you breed two animals of the same star, it will always come out with another animal of the same star again. So for boars in this case, if I breed these two boars here together, they will put out a two-star baby boar. And the same applies for these one-star boars. If I breed those together, I'm gonna get a one-star boar out of it. So if you're looking to grind more leather scraps or meat, or you just want stronger animals that you can breed to protect you, like wolves, for an example, or maybe locks, then you're gonna wanna try to find higher star animals as much as you possibly can and breed those rather than breeding something that's, you know, zero star if that's an option for you just keep in mind these animals do hit harder so they have a higher chance of being able to break out of these fences so if you are doing the higher star ones you're probably going to want to go ahead and give yourself a second layer whether that's for boars that's for locks that's for anything so if you were taming say a three two star locks over here i would probably make a double layer thick stone enclosure when i'm trying to tame those just to make sure that they don't escape or decide that they want to kill you. So now let's go ahead and talk about the wolves real quick and the locks and how we're going to tame those. So for the wolves in particular, you're going to need to be using these wooden fence things here. Uh, I believe they're called the stake walls because these are going to have a lot more durability than these little fences and the wolves hit significantly harder and have a lot more health. So you need to be much more cautious when you're dealing with them. So I would even tell you the best way to go ahead and build your pen is again the same concept here. We're building it if you can on a hill in this case because these walls are higher and harder to jump out of. So if you do get stuck in this situation where you can't kind of get out of your little building that you've created, your best option is going to be to probably go ahead and just build yourself a foundation or something like that in order to hop on it when you bring that wolf inside. So again, that would be me destroying this wall. I've built myself this foundation to jump on. You can build this higher up on the walls, nothing's stopping you. So you build your little foundation and then you quickly sprint jump over your wall. So if I had a wolf chasing me, which we'll, let's just go ahead and spawn one in real quick so we can see that. So I have this wolf here. He's gonna probably get very upset at me. We're gonna run inside here as fast as we can. We're then going to try to wall ourselves in without dying. And then we're going to jump over in order to make sure that it's secure. And then if at all possible, at this point on, you're going to want to try to build and throw food in from the top rather than going back in the pen. With the boars, you can get away with that because they don't hit very hard. So it's not a big deal. But as you can see, this thing is hitting for, what, 60-something damage? Like, and these things are taking some, some big damage here. So you need to be using a good strength wall whenever you're taming wolves, and locks even more so. So for wolves in particular, you're going to use raw meat in order to tame these creatures. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some in here just so you get the same idea. Again, the star system works the same. You breed the same stars together, you get that star. And if we breed this wolf, you're going to see that he will breed and put out baby wolves. And you can have your own little army guarding your base if that's something that you wanted to do. I know this was a great help for me on my group server. So if you were wondering whether or not this is something that you should bother with doing, it is extremely, extremely helpful, especially if you can get it early enough in the game in order to protect you from pretty much everything. The only thing I had issues with is when you get later on and they start raiding your base with some of the late game creatures that I don't want to spoil too much for you guys. They tend to be not able to reach them. So that is an issue that you will run into. But like I said, early, mid game, even somewhat into late game, they're still just nice because you don't have to spend that time defending your base and they will defend it for you. 
Also, something to keep in mind with taming here, guys. Whenever you tame something, you do not have to feed it. That is completely optional. The only benefit to feeding it once it's tamed is to breed it. It will also give it a small amount of HP, not a large amount, but it will make it slowly heal a little faster. Otherwise, they just heal if you just leave them there after they've taken some damage from fighting something. So for locks, they're a little bit different. Whenever you want to tame a locks, you're going to have to use barley, cloudberries, or flax. These are much harder to tame than every other creature in Valheim. And that's because if you've ever fought a lox, you know how difficult they are to deal with, especially when you're in close quarters. So I would recommend you build a bigger pen than this. I mean, I can't even fit two of them in here, but you want the biggest pen you possibly can get, probably at least twice this size. You're gonna close it in with stone, just like we did with these. Maybe build yourself a platform to hop out, then run away drop in some berries or drop in some barley or flax or whatever you're taming it with from as high of a point as you can otherwise they're going to aggro on you and they will absolutely demolish things i would even consider making a two layer thick stone wall if that's an option for you guys loxes are beasts they are the trolls of the plains biome and they hit extremely hard so i think it's even with full iron armor you're looking at two maybe three or four hits if you're lucky and have high hp before lox is going to take you down so just do be cautious of that guys they do do structural damage i believe once they're tamed so keep that in mind if you do have them at your base or wherever you decide to bring them that they are a risk hazard for that you can use them when you're out in that plains biome where you tame them or any biome you can walk them to and hopefully it'll be something that you can use. I really didn't bother with the locks because they were just too much of a hassle and they really weren't worth it by the time I was able to get them. So either way, there's something there. You can tame all three of these different creatures in Valheim. Each one has different uses. The boars are a great food source. The wolves are great for protecting your base and you can run around with them if that's what you want. I usually take one out when I'm chopping trees and it deals with all the little monsters that show up so I don't have to focus on them. And then the locks, I mean, they're just beasts. If you can tame one man, they are beasts. They breed the same way as everything else does. It's just very, very difficult to take them on. Alrighty, so next up, let's talk about the farming in Valheim. Now, in order to do this, the first thing you're going to need are a hoe and a cultivator. So we have both of those here. And the cultivator, if you don't know, is a bronze tool. So if you're wondering how to get it or something like that, that is how you're going to get access to that. So you're going to pull out your hoe and you're going to probably want to level out some ground if at all possible. Again, this part is a little optional. You don't really have to level the ground out. I just like to do it. It makes my farm look pretty and keeps it nice and level so that I know my spacing is correct. Then you're going to take out your cultivator and you have to actually cultivate the ground. This is different from hoeing it, so do keep that in mind. Level ground will look like this, a kind of a brighter color, and cultivating the ground is gonna look a darker color like this. So you're gonna wanna cultivate all of this ground so that you can plant things inside of it. Now there are a few things we can plant, but the most important one you're gonna come across early on is going to be carrots. So when you're planting carrots, let's go ahead and spawn some of those in real quick. So when you're planting your carrots, you're gonna have this little window pop up again, just like we're going to do to cultivate. You're gonna right click to get that open, by the way, in case you guys didn't figure that out. So when you're planting your carrots, you're gonna have two options here. You have your seed carrots, which can plant a carrot in the ground and will go th grow three seeds. And you have a carrot carrot. So these are grown from the seeds that are grown from the seed carrot. The great thing about this is you can essentially produce an infinite amount of food by using this method. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the 10 carrots we already have. Normally you'd be starting out with carrot seeds and growing the carrots first, but again, we already have some of those, so we're kind of skipping that step, and we're going to plant these seed carrots. If you guys don't know what seeds look like in the wild, they're going to look like these little white flowers right here. So if you are trying to find them and you can't seem to figure out where they're at, they're going to be in the black forest for carrots, and they're going to be in the swamp biome for turnips. Turnips are a little harder to spot. They're a little bit darker colored and it's already in a dark biome. So you have to be really on the lookout to find those turnips inside the swamp. 
But anyways, let's go ahead and plant our carrot seeds here. So we're going to plant these down. Now, when you're planting them, if you plant them too close, you're going to see what will happen is it'll say that there's not enough space. So let's see if we give this a second here. Yep, here we go. So this one says seed carrot needs more room to grow. So it's not that that can't grow. It's that with that in its current placement, it is too close to something else trying to grow or some other object, maybe like a foundational piece or some other part of a building. And therefore the game is telling it that it cannot grow. This is how the game kind of limits you and makes you not able to just spam stack them all around each other, right on top of each other. So what you need to do is I usually will spread them out roughly about that far apart. It's not perfect. There's not really a perfect method to this that I've found yet. Maybe about one foundation, half a foundation distance apart seems to work fine. And you'll be able to grow a lot of carrots. I like to grow them in nice rows, but if you really want to, I mean, there's nothing stopping you from just randomly planting everything. When this one is done growing and you pick it, this one will then start growing. So it's not dead. Just remember that because I wasted a ton of carrots deleting these ones that I thought were dead. And if you do want to remove them for whatever reason, in order to remove a plant that is not done growing, you're just gonna go ahead and kick it. If you don't know how to kick, that's gonna be your middle mouse button whenever you do not have anything in your hand. That is your kick button. So keep that in mind. If you ever need to delete a plant for some reason, that's your only way to do it. So what's great about growing these foods, like I said earlier, is you're gonna get three seeds from them. So if we pull open our cultivator here, and we plant, let's go ahead and plant the rest of these just so they're done. When these all grow, I'm gonna get three seeds per carrot I planted. So that means I'm gonna get the 30 seeds for the 10 carrots that we've already put in the ground. Now, once you have that, you can then plant those 30 seeds and you have 30 carrots. Then you'll have 90 seeds if you plant those carrots again. And if you plant those 90 seeds, you'll then go all the way up and triple that again to 270 carrots. So in a matter of four to five harvests, which usually takes about two to three in-game days from my experience to grow, you're going to have a massive field of food that you can pretty much endlessly use to farm. So, you know, you can make your carrot soup and all that kind of stuff. Uh, again, turnips work the exact same way. They are the exact same thing. They're just a different icon. They grow the same. They need the same separation. They need, have three seeds every time you plant them, and they give you three seeds to make three turnips. Three turnips make nine seeds. Nine seeds make 27 turnips. 27 turnips, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. So you may be asking yourself, what is the whole point to this whole farming thing? Like carrots are great, but they only give me like the same amount of food, stamina and health or whatever as a mushroom, which I can just get all day long in the forest. Well, I'm gonna show you right now. So if you go ahead and build yourself a cauldron, it's right here under the crafting section and you build it over a campfire, you're gonna get access to a ton of different cooking recipes. So let's go look at some of these options we have, right? For an example here, let's see if we can find a good one that doesn't use barley. Some carrot soup. Carrot soup is great because it's going to give you 60 stamina compared to a normal carrot, which is only going to give you about 10 or 15. So if you do take the time to put three carrots and one mushroom in, you're going to get a 1500 second buff that gives you 60 stamina, which is absolutely amazing compared to the 15 or 20 you would normally get just from eating the raw carrot. Yes, it's less efficient for your total gain stamina over the full duration, but it is more efficient in the sense that you're gonna have a bigger stamina pool for that time period. It is great for when you're fighting boss. Carrot soup is absolutely amazing because it's gonna give you that huge amount of stamina you need to not run out mid combat. There are of course other foods you can make like the lox meat pie if you want to go out of your way and farm barley that is another thing you can grow or you could make go get some cloud berries and stuff and make some of that this gives you a huge amount of health and stamina but the other end of the spectrum you also have turnip stew and all sorts of different things that give you different buffs but the more important stuff we have here are the mead bases if you don't know what these are these are going to require a different assortment of things depending on what you want them to make so let's say you want a frost resistance mead. 
So if you want to make this, you're going to get all the item ingredients you need. You're going to go ahead and throw yourself down a fermenter, which is going to look like this. It takes five brawn, 10 resin, and 30 fine wood. Not very hard to make. And you're going to go ahead and add that base once you're done creating it into the fermenter. And within usually about two to seven in-game days, each one varies a little bit, I believe. Don't correct me on that one. I could be wrong. But either way, it shouldn't take more than a one in-game week in order to create your meads. Each one has extremely useful benefits that are good in different ways. So I'm just going to go through them real quick so you guys know. I'll do this rapid fire. So your tasty mead is going to make you regen half as much HP, but triple your energy regen. Stamina is going to do the same thing, but only for stamina. Again, with the medium stamina, same thing, but faster. Your poison resistance, pretty self-explanatory. It makes you not take a lot of poison damage. Your minor healing is one of the best options you're going to have whenever you're fighting something or your medium healing, if that's an option for you guys. Those are going to be great for when you're dealing with bosses or if you're low health and don't have any food. It's really your only way to heal if you can't consume something else quickly to get your HP up fast. These are going to be like your health potions, absolutely crucial to doing some of the late game bosses. Frost resistance is the only way to enter the frost biome until you get a wolf pelt cape. So until you get that, this is your best friend. You're going to be using tons of these. So save up your honey and thistles. Make yourself tons of frost resistance potions. And if you're in a group, you're going to need a lot of them. So do keep that in mind. Your serpent stew is not a mead base, but it is something I wanted to mention because it is an absolutely amazing mid to early game and even late game food. It's just as good as lox meat pie. It gives you 80 health and 80 stamina and four HP per tick for a total of a half an hour, which is just, I'm sorry, is that half an hour? No, it's 40 minutes, I believe. My math may be wrong. It's 2,400 seconds. Yeah, yeah, so that would be 40 minutes. So. It's a 40 minute buff that's going to make you have an insane stat. So if you guys do get the chance to collect serpent meat, do not eat the meat raw. Cook it and make it insert in the little crock pot so you can have that serpent stew. It is such a good item. You will thank me later for it, trust me. Hey guys, so we are here at the end of the video now and I wanted to say a quick thank you to all of our subscribers that helped us make it to the 1000 subscriber mark. This is a huge milestone for us and we are so excited to be here, but we would not be here without any of the help from you guys. So without you guys, none of this would be possible. Thank you again. I am so grateful and so is everyone on the Game Advisor team. We plan on continuing to make the best content we possibly can for you guys and continuing to improve every single day. Thank you so much. Smash that like button if you like this video and we will see you next time.